Hi, my name is Doug Leisure. I wanted to give you a quick overview of the uh, solution that I created for helping us as we are doing our uh, weekly giving uh, for our church, recording information. Um, so let me go ahead and get started and show you what that would look like. So I'm presuming at this point the software is installed and configured. We've set all the parameters to match our, our particular church information. So now we just want to launch it for the first time and begin recording our giving for our first our first week in January. So we go to the folder on our computer that contains our uh, the place where, where we will record all the giving for 20 for the year 2016 and we open the master weekly file. Always start with the master. So we'll go ahead and, and uh, launch that. I actually have it running already. So you'll see that when you launch it, the first thing it does is to ask for the date of your donation. Now, typically, if you if you're recording on the day that you receive the donations, that date will be entered in. But we can also uh, if the date isn't correct, we can always override that and put in the new date. So let's go ahead and presume that we're doing it for uh, for January 3rd, the first week in uh, in 2016. So we just simply uh, enter the date, say OK. And then it says, go ahead and enter your giving information for this week and use control M when you're done to bring up the menu. So let's go ahead and walk through a sample, uh, a sample entry for, uh, for our donations for the week. Okay. So we have the, uh, the Excel solution running for, for recording our donations. And let's go ahead and, and uh, look at our, at our donations and, and we have some envelopes there as well as some loose cash. So let's open up the first envelope and we see that uh, it is an envelope uh, with the number, the envelope number two on it. We recognize that as, as uh, donations from Natalie. So we start in the donor column and we put in uh, her envelope number two. As soon as we do that, uh, we can see that her name, it does a little lookup and, and, and shows Natalie's name here. So it's just a confirmation that we have the correct donor number to match the, the person that's giving the donations. We look inside of that and we see that we have two $5 bills. So under the cash column, we would enter $10 because that's the amount of cash that was given. Now, as soon as we do that, we notice that Natalie's name uh, is, is now displaying in red. Red is a color that we simply use to identify that things are not in balance. She's given $10 in cash. We haven't identified uh, what categories she wants that to go in. So as we read the envelope, we can see that she said that she wanted $5 to go to general and $5 to missions. And as soon as we enter the $5 in each of those categories, we can see now that things are balanced because it's no longer in red. So red is a color to show when things are out of balance. Yellow is where we do our entry. So you only enter in the yellow cells. Okay, we're done with that first one. Let's go on to the next envelope. Again, we look at the envelope and we see that it's it has an envelope number of six. We recognize that as uh, donations from Sean. So we enter six, confirm that the, the name that shows up there is, is Sean's name. We look inside, we see there's a check for $100. So we move over here to the check column, identify that his check is for $100. And now we look at the way he filled out the envelope and he says that he wants $50 to go to the general, 25 to missions, and 25 to building. So as we fill this in, it's it's in red, meaning it's out of balance until we fill in the amounts. And then we, then we can confirm that we have correctly recorded the categories, the amounts in each category. Okay, let's go on to the next envelope. And uh, this is marked as uh, as uh, Emmy Emmy Shaw, and uh, we know that her her number is is number four. So we we enter donor number four, confirm that that's the right name, and now we can we can do the entry. Now, interestingly, as we look at this particular envelope, we notice that there's actually two checks inside, one for fifty dollars and one for ten dollars. So we go ahead and put fifty here and 10 here in the, for the checks. And then we look at the way it's, it's been categorized. 
So uh, we can see that, that Emmy wanted us to do uh, $50 to general. And then um, there's also uh, $10 for the in, in the other check. And, and there she indicated that she wanted $10 to go to a special offering for Vacation Bible School. So I go ahead and mark in the comment that this special is for Vacation Bible School. All right. Now the next thing we, we do is we, we take the next uh, the next envelope. We happen to notice that this is another envelope for Natalie, a second second envelope for Natalie. And so um, we know that her her number is is two. Oh, that's right because Natalie was out sick last week, so. So she was kind enough to go ahead and bring in two envelopes this time, one for last week and one for this week. Not a problem. So we look inside of, of the second one and we see that there's two tens and one five. So we would mark in the cash column that there's $25 inside of, inside of the envelope. And now we look at how she categorized it. So she wants $10 to go to general, five to missions, five to building, and five to benevolent. And now we see that everything is in balance again. All right, what else do we have? Oh, okay, we have some loose offering, just, just thrown in the offering plate. And when we look at that, we can see that we have 120, 110, and three ones. So we've assigned number 100 as our donor number for all of the loose offerings. And so we enter 100 for the donor number under cash, we enter the $33 that we find loose in the cash, and we put that under general. All right, I see there's one more, uh, one more envelope in there, and this has the, the name on it of Dylan Snow. Well, it turns out that Dylan, though he's been coming for a while, uh, has, has not been using the envelope system until recently. Um, actually, this, sorry, this is his first time in giving a, don a donation. So what we want to do is we want to actually set up a, a new donor for, for Dylan because we know he's going to be going to be doing, uh, we expect him to be uh, doing donations, um, you know, for, for the next number of, of weeks and months and years while he's here. So, so let's assign a new, a new donor number. So we come here to the donor tab and we put in uh, Dylan's na uh, name. And we also have Dylan's address. So we'll enter that now, right? And we can read that as we're reading his check. We, we have his name and an address. So we'll go ahead and enter that here. And then we want to assign a, a number. Now, if, if Dylan, if this was like a, a one-time offering and we didn't expect them to ever give it again, you might use some number way up in the in the 300s or 400s or even 200, depending on how many how many donors you typically have. But but we, we know that we're, we're expecting Dylan to be given giving on, on a regular basis. So we'll go ahead and just assign him the next the next number um, right after loose. So we'll, we'll assign him number 101. All right, now that we've assigned a new donor number and we'll consistently use 101 for Dylan from this day forward. We'll go back and we'll go ahead and and enter 101 for the donor number. And again, he, he gave us a, a check, a $50 check. Oh, sorry, not cash. It's a check of $50. And he said that he wanted that to go to the general fund. Okay, so let's let's presume. I mean, Let's presume that you would. This is all the entries we have. And pretty, pretty simplistic to understand. But, but let's presume that these are the entries. So uh, the next thing we'd want to do, as we scroll down here, we can see that we are we are totaling our cash and our checks, and and also by category: general missions, building, benevolent specials, etc. But the next part of of the the weekly giving that we need to handle is to balance the cash and the check information to make sure. Uh, not only by person, but in, in totality that everything is still balancing. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and look at the cash. So we can see here uh, the question is the is the church cash in balance? 
and because it's marked in red we know that it is out of balance and that's simply because we haven't told we haven't entered here uh, how many of each denomination we've received so thinking about the cash we look at it and we start entering um, just simply the quantities that we have how many pennies nickels dimes ones fives tens etc so let, let's take a look at that again so as we look at, at, at the cash in total we see that we have three ones, three fives, three tens, and one twenty. So that's what we would enter here. Three ones, three fives, three tens, and one twenty. Okay, and you're welcome to, to count the money to make sure it balances, but, but this is actually pretty simplistic in that all you have to do is be able to count the number of fives, tens, twenties, etc., and it'll do the math for us. So as we enter that, it calculates the total of the cash that is given and we validate that it balances to what what we entered above so it's no longer in red we know that the cash balances go down and let's do that. a similar thing for the the checks that were given are they in balance currently they're not in balance so we come here we just start entering the checks that we're given and you could do it basically in any order you want down the columns or across the rows doesn't and just as long as we do the entry in the the yellow part here okay so looking at the checks we had we had um, the first thing we had was a $50 check from Dylan and we had a uh, $100 check from Sean also a $50 check from Emily another $10 check from Emily and as soon as we do that entry it totals all of our check amounts and validates that that balances against the things that we entered above by person. Okay. Now at this point, everything is in balance and we've completed everything. We are ready to, uh, to go on to the final step here, which is um, control M. We saw that when we first started the software, control M brings up the menu. Okay. And what we want to tell the software is that the entry that we've done is complete. So we'd like to save this information and then print, uh, print the information that we need for our treasurer and our assistant treasurer. So one is the menu item we want to use here. And we say OK. And it saves the information, saves a, a re record uh, of, of what was get, what there, there's a, a place where it saves all the information week after week after week after week and we use that to build our our receipts at the end of the year as well as as well as our monthly reports and then ask the question do you want to give would you want to print the giving information normally we'd say yes print out the information that we hand to the to the treasurer as well as the assistant treasurer so i'm going to say no for today uh, for this little demonstration and it tells us that it has saved the information in this this folder with this this name and then we can exit and we're ready for the next week now be, before i do that let's let's go ahead and take a quick look at at uh, what what information has been recorded here real quick uh, first of all you can see that it, there is now a second entry here this is a record of what was given um, for that uh, for that week and and yes it's possible to have multiple uh, multiple donations on the same day if you take if you take multiple uh, multiple offerings and, and record them separately it'll just depend a one two three four five etc at the end here for for each uh, for each donation that you take on that day what's inside of there is just a record of of uh, who gave and what they gave to as well as the the quantities and checks that were given we also can see then the totals by category and for any specials all of the specials are listed and the totals given to each special so that is just a, a simple way to record the details of what was given at during each donation okay in addition to that we have some things that help us not only with the weekly the weekly giving but also then throughout the year one of the things we have going on for us is 
is a, a monthly report that is actually taking that weekly information and then uh, summarizing it into, uh, into the, the, the monthly amounts given for each of our categories. So as you move through the year, each of these will be, will be filled in. The monthly amounts will be filled in. And um, one of our menu choices here is to print item three, to print that monthly report. And that just simply prints, uh, prints this, uh, this page of, of, of information here for your, your monthly giving information. Uh, the other thing is we have a record of all of the all of the giving by person for throughout the entire year. So it's just you know it's going to build on, on on this this record here each each time we do the, do the the month the weekly re recording. It'll just add to this particular this particular tab here. We just keep extending this on down as we record each each weekly giving. We use that for the reports, but we also use that for doing our receipts by person. Right, so if we were doing a receipt for Natalie, we would enter the donor number here, and it would record then a, a receipt that would be, we would be ready to print for Natalie. Now, at the end of the year, we could do it one at a time, but that would be kind of crazy. So again, our, our menu gives us a way to print all of the receipts at the end of the year. So menu choice item six here would print the receipts. And basically it's just gonna go through uh, all of our donors one at a time and um, fill in the, 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 the donor information and print it, go on to the next donor, fill it in, print it, fill it in, print it for all of our donors. So. All right, uh, hopefully that gives you a, a pretty good overview of the um, of this this little tool that I've created, and um, look a, take a quick look at the uh, at the the user manual that I created for it. If you want to see uh, more details about about how it works and how you would use the tool. All right. Again, my name is Doug Laser, and uh, hopefully this has been helpful for you.